Back in the noughties, Spanish-built Benimar carved out a very nice niche for itself, building good quality motorhomes at attractive prices. Then the recession hit and Benimar went back to Spain with its tail between its legs. Now however, Benimar is back in the country, imported by multi-dealer outlet Marquis Motorhomes. I'm here on the Caravan Club site at Littlehampton doing a live-in test for a week in one of the new, latest ones actually to hit these shores, the Milio 201. Before we look inside, it's worth mentioning that this is a 2014 model. Uh, all of next year's models will actually be built on the facelifted Pier Ducato, where you'll get sharper external styling with new headlamps, and in the cab, a redesigned dash with new clocks and some extra features. So now I've got comfortable in the lounge, and before we go on to actually talk about that, there's one other thing that I must mention that's very, very important, and that's the fact that the habitation door is actually on the UK near side. This is something that Marquis have specified, and it's great because it's different to most other Continentals. It means if you're parked in the street, you can actually alight from the van safely onto the curbside. The lounge itself uh, is pretty standard, at least you may think it is at first glance forward-facing double travel seat, swivel cab seats and the table. We might expect the table normally to be wall hung but that's actually not possible here because they've included a small L shape in the corner to make a bit of an L shaped sofa. The table itself is pedestal mounted and multi adjustable. You can slide it to and fro and side to side so there's really great dining for four people in here with absolutely no problems at all. Above there's a large sunroof, blinds closed today because it's very very hot outside, uh, a midi hecky as well so there's plenty of ventilation, there's also a very very good range of LED lighting. To the rear the central kitchen is very well equipped, the bathroom has curved walls so you don't snag yourself on it when moving around the interior and that's very nice, nicely equipped as well. So here we are in the rear and as I described earlier we've got the kitchen on this side, the washroom here behind a timbre door which is really quite nice because you can leave it open at night so it's easy to get in to use the loo in the wee small hours. Transverse double bed above the garage in the rear, the bed is a good length and a very good width as well. But first the kitchen, one of the best features about this is the simplest one and that's the fact that there is a large slab of worktop available. This again is a rare thing in Continentals and I don't know whether Marquis have specified it but whoever did made a very good decision. It's an excellent practical kitchen, I've been using it for the last four or five days and I've had no problems at all cooking. You've got the standard sink here, stainless steel, mixer tap. You don't get a draining board but I think the worktop surface more than makes up for this. Here you have uh, again another thing not often found in continental motorhomes which is a proper cooker, grill, oven, three burner hob with a high speed burner for boiling your kettle quickly first thing in the morning, two decent sized lockers above, a large drawer below the cooker which is just out of shot, a cupboard and a cutlery drawer. Just here is the microwave and if you walk into this van for the first time and you've got any kind of experience in motorhomes you're going to look at this and go oh no look at it it's far too high up it's going to be dangerous to use i can imagine boiling gravy running down my front however there is a solution the bed access steps which fold out are very stable and easy to use and great for getting you into bed at night and out again easily however you can also use them as a hop up step up one step and the microwave is very easy to get at and very safe to use. And so to the ablutions. And this bathroom is typically continental, aside that is from the fact that it's actually got a window. A lot of continental bathrooms don't have a window and this one's obscured as well so you can use it to admit uh, natural light and also provide ventilation in hot weather. The rest of the room is a, is a white clean situation. You have a decent sized basin, plenty of storage, plenty of countertop, places to for towels, uh, for soap, uh, and also a, a well positioned toilet bowl holder that's easy to use. Two downsides in here are the fact that the toilet is mounted a little bit high so if you're short in the leg you might find it a little bit uncomfortable when you're seated. 
The shower is integral, it's got two outlets in the uh, wet room floor and a semi-circular rigid screen which slides around. To enclose you when you want a shower there's also a, a swing out flap and the whole thing really is a little bit on the heavy side. I found it difficult to use and indeed I was afraid that it might break so I think that design and also the execution needs a little bit more work. Aside from that this washroom is spacious, easy to keep clean, very easy to use, bright and well lit. So now we're back outside where we can take a look at one of the reasons to buy this vehicle and that's the fact that beneath the double bed is a garage. It's accessed through two doors as an identical one the other side of the vehicle and quite easy to open up. There's good access in here. Uh, the spare wheels in here which actually does make the garage a little bit narrower but it's probably nicer than actually having it underneath. It's also good that they actually supply a spare wheel where a lot of the converters these days don't. Uh, this is also the area where we discover the Milo's party trick and that is that the bed is actually adjustable. If you look here you can see a winder. This handle engages wind it, the bed raises, you get reduced headroom inside and the bed's higher up. You've now got a full size garage which should be big enough to actually take bikes if you want to go away. You need a smaller locker, wind it back down again and then you've got a bed with far greater headroom inside. 